It's a grizzly. Should we get out of here? No. We're gonna watch and listen. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Open Door to Grizzly and Barb. Barb is glad to have you back. I'm glad you're Thank feeling well. You. Yes, I am. I'm feeling better. I had, um, I guess, a stomach bug. I'm not sure, but it was not pleasant. <laughs> you know how they are. No, it, it was awkward, right? Let's play some Hollywood That's Squares. The- right? Hello, Catherine. Worst. So everybody, welcome hey, to the show here. And let's Russell. see here, Russell, yes, and Crazy Witch coming up in the rear. Here comes Hi, Crazy, Crazy Witch around the corner, everybody. Here he is. He loves when I do that. He's laughing. Uh, Mort, <laughs> how you doing, Mort? Mort. Welcome to the show. Hi. So, uh, oh. yeah, so it's been kind of different with you not being around. And uh, oh. so, yeah. So uh, <laughs> I'm glad you missed me. I'm sorry. I, I miss you guys. Not too, only did I... I miss you, but everybody else missed you as well. Oh, right? that's <laughs> yeah, when I got the notification last night and I was like, oh, I'm so bummed. But I just, yeah, I wouldn't, it would, it, you know, you know, anyway, how that goes. Oh, right, right. Yeah, yeah, they only last, you know, for, I think that was, I was like on my second day of it. So I was, you know, anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's uh, just terrible to go through. So what we got going on tonight? I heard we got some today? good things. Yeah, yeah, we sure do. I've been looking forward to this today. We have Jennifer Appleton. Jennifer is um, from Tennessee. Um, I'll let her introduce herself. But she, first of all, she's just, uh, she's hilarious. She's just tons of fun. Um, we moderate a couple pages together. And um, she has all kinds of stuff going on on her Uh-oh. property. She has... Uh, paranormal, cryptids, um, aliens, um, elementals, just all kinds of, yeah, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> so I now really, this is know, where everybody's like, Grizzly's supposed to go, do what? Yeah. <laughs> because they, they you, have coined that term that I've been using. If you've not, if you've not watched the other shows, so like you didn't say your what thing. And I'm like, what? They're like, that's it. So now I, I had to get that trademark or something somehow. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so we'll go ahead and bring her on because I'm okay. real excited. Jennifer, yeah. welcome to the show. We'll play some Hollywood Squares here. Bring you to the right side. How are Hi, you doing? Hi, Jennifer. Wait, can we hear Uh-oh. her? Can, can, hello. Can you hear her? You can't hear can us? Can you hear us? Uh-oh. Um, let's see. Yeah, well, everything's fine on our side. Yeah. Oh, no. Uh, that ain't a hmm. problem. What we'll do is just just come right back in, and uh, okay. and we'll try that. Uh, but no, but I actually talked about you on the national show today about oh, the did? Yahweh's. Yeah, and they're like yeah. Yahweh's. I'm like, yeah, off Star Wars. They're like, what? Yeah, and yeah. I'm like, yes. And uh, I wanted to show them. I was like, no, I can't show. Them. I said, I got to ask permission on that one. And then I was yeah. explaining to them about your activity. And they're like, what? I'm like, yeah, no, right? And here she is. All right, Jennifer, we'll bring okay. you back on. Oh, I hope we can hear Oh, I heard you that time. Now I can something. hear you now. Yay, yeah. awesome. I was like, oh, no. There Hi, we Jennifer. go. Oh, it's so, I'm so excited hey. to talk to you. Now we keep flipping. Hold on. Let me get you back. There we go. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Nice to have you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to be with you. Yeah, so introduce yourself. Tell us all about you. There's not a whole lot to know. I am a retired uh, grandmother who's well, been good. having experiences her entire life with cryptids and aliens, elementals, UFOs. They all go hand in hand. But it started with Bigfoot when I was very, very young. Like I said, I, I worked in the workforce for 25 years. And finally, one day, my husband said, it's time for you to stay home. And I was like, I'm not going to argue with you, but that mm-hmm. gave me free time because he worked six days a week, 12, 14 hours a day. So that was me in the woods, home alone, all that time out trekking in the woods, realizing that the family I had grown up with had followed me here and re- getting reacquainted with them. So it's been an experience. It really has. Wow. Wow. So you're saying yeah, they so, followed you. Go ahead. Yeah. I wow. live right now currently about 90 miles from where I was born and raised. And wow. my, my first contact with, with the Sasquatch people, the forest people, was when I was very young. My first memory 
I was about three or four and I had, I was across my father's horse pasture. I was picking buttercups and I'm wandering along. I remember going over the fence or through it and going up a little hill, still just picking my flowers. And I stumped my foot on something. And when I looked down, it was a big hairy foot. Oh my God. And as I looked up, I was looking up. It was the most beautiful pair of eyes I've ever seen in my life. And it was the out, it was the, the female of the group of the clan. And I remember looking at her eyes and smiling and offering her a buttercup. And I see the smile back in her eyes. And it's just radiant, the beauty of this being. And that was my first memory of these beings. I was about three or four years old. Oh my God. You weren't, a fr you weren't scared. She, no. Oh, that's amazing. No, I was not because of the love that was radiating from her and oh, it was, it was all coming from her eyes. She had the most beautiful eyes I've ever seen. And I just remember feeling loved and safe. Oh, I love yeah. that. Wow. That's, yeah, that's the first memory. And that wow. was a location where I grew up. It was about 90 miles from here. Okay. And um, funny story about that is if either one of you know, Roger Williams, that's from Marshall no. County. Yeah, He's, no, um, yeah. He yeah. is, you know, Roger, well, a lot happened in the, in my home, the house that I grew up in until I was 10 years old and we moved to another location. Six months after we moved out of that location, Roger and his family moved in and that's when he started having experiences. So I think a lot of it may have been also that location. Oh, wow. Just a little tidbit of information yeah. there. He's very interesting. He's very interesting. But the house was haunted. It was an old dormitory, school dormitory for- Oh my God single girls for a small little Marshall County, Tennessee is where I was born and raised. So it's from Marshall County school. And apparently the headmistress had died in the upper level of that house many years, many years before we moved into it. And uh, yeah, it was nothing to see her wandering through there or hear her at night. So yeah, it was a haunted location to begin with. Wow. Yeah, I was saying to Grizzly that we're going to have to have you back for <laughs> at least one or two more shows because you just have so much to tell. And I love hearing of all of your because um, you've had encounters with obviously with the cryptids, many cryptids with the paranormal. I, I you know, I want to hear all about that. Um, yeah. And then even some aliens. Right. Yes. Aliens. It all goes hand in hand. The my, my father, I can remember back in 73, was what they called back then a flying saucer chaser. But that's when they were having a wave of UFO sightings in the Middle Tennessee area. And it was before me move on. So he would go with several other investigators. One was Stanley Ingram, who worked for Pulaski, Tennessee newspaper. And they would go and talk to people that had seen uh, UFO, had UFO sightings, had encounters with Sasquatch and the whole nine yards. And, and, and father started having his own sightings of the UFOs. And of course, I think by, not only my encounter with the first female Sasquatch, but his interest in the ships themselves is what interlooped it all into my life. Oh, okay. Wow. Hmm. Incredible. Yeah, uh, well, some of it's a blessing <laughs> and some of it's a nightmare. Yeah, yeah. But it's all it's all interconnected. It's all connected. So mm -hmm. the um so you had that experience when you were about three or four. Um, do you think that um that the you know, like the clan that I guess is that what you would call them a clan? That's the, the family, family, the family. The I just okay. as my family, you know, okay, they're like family. Do you think that they are all um family with the first Sasquatch that you saw? Is that all the same family? Yes, yeah, she was the grandmother of the group, she's the oldest oh. female. Yeah, oh wow, that's I remember uh seeing her again when I was about five or six years old. I was at my grandmother's house, it was three miles from my home, and she, of course, I grew up on a farm, so it's just farmland, rolling hills. And grandmother had uh, no indoor plumbing, so she had her washing machine, her ringer's height washing machine out on the back porch. And we were out, I was out there on the porch with her. And I happened to look up and about 150 yards up the hill, straight up the hill, was where she had her tobacco patch. And there was a fence lining that entire tobacco patch. And I remember seeing a huge black forest being, a male, big one, you could tell it was just huge, walking a full length of that fence. And he knew I was watching him because he turned and looked at me. And that's when I started saying, Granny, Granny, look, look, it's the bear man. He's come back to see me. It's the bear man. <laughs> <laughs> Granny <laughs> turned around and looked at me, looked up toward the back patch, grabbed me up by the scuff of my shirt, 
drug me into the house, oh. slammed and locked the door and called my daddy and said, get over here with your rifle right now. There's a monster over here. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that was her one and only encounter with the family. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, but he was really big. The The fence that bordered the tobacco patch was four and a half feet, and he was double that height as he walked by it. And he, like wow. I said, he knew that I was watching because he turned his head and looked right wow. at me. So he knew I was watching. Wow. The granny was just tore all to pieces. That that was a really funny, funny. <laughs> yeah, not for granny. Not, but for, for, no, not for my <laughs> granny. But for, for me, because I, I, I talked about the bear man for weeks after that. Got several yeah. spankings over it because dad said, don't you tell anybody what you saw. <laughs> <laughs> and a kid that age, it's like, yeah, sure. <laughs> when you're that little, you're just like, oh, guess what I saw? Yes, yes. Yeah. So did your dad, um, did he come, you know, did he have, did he come over or what? He came when over with a rifle and he looked and he found Prince and he told Granny, it's nothing to worry about. It's gone. Whatever it was, it was probably a bear. <laughs> typical, atypical hunter's response. It was probably a bear. Yeah. And he looked at me, but he cut those eyes at me like he knew it wasn't a bear, but for her sake, it was a bear. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. she just accepted that. You know how some people are, they would much rather accept the sighting of a bear yeah. than a Sasquatch. Right, right. So, um, yeah. Russell Easterbrooks is asking, do you remember what color the eyes were? On the female, they were a golden coppery, like honey. They oh, were just beautiful, wow. beautiful color. And, um, of course, she had a big round pupil. She had their eyes. The artists can't do justice, but they're going by the ape philosophy. The eyes are much larger, and there's very little whites. They do have okay. a pupil, but they have very little whites in their eyes. And they're much larger than any picture that any artist I've seen oh, has drawn. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying gigantic, but they're yeah. a lot larger yeah. than than the yeah, scale I, model they're using. Wow. Because I have yeah, seen beautiful even, eyes. You've and seen, she was a um, coppery color. She was real pretty, like oh, the color wow. of a copper penny. Oh, that's beautiful. But now, ironically, later on in life, when I was seeing her here, she was gray. So that told me they gray with age, just like we do. Because it was the very same female. She was mm -hmm. the monarch of the clan. Wow. Yeah. You've, do you have any idea how old she is? I couldn't even gauge a guess. The The large alpha male that's here is her, one of her oldest sons. And I can remember seeing him that day when I stumped my foot. There were three smaller ones behind a fallen log that she was sitting on. And he was one of them. And he was about, he was a little bit bigger than me, but not a lot. So he was wow. very young at the time. Yeah. So that would put him at 57. That's how old I am or okay. older. Uh -huh. Maybe he was a couple of years older than I am. Okay. So wow. I have I would hate to guess at how old she was. Yeah, yeah. You know, she's at least 15 or 20 years older than he is, mm -hmm. at least. I mean, well, I've heard, we've heard, right, Grizzly, that they can live like 100 to 150. Is that, is that what you to heard? They have years, extremely yeah. long lifelines, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah that's just incredible. Yeah. Um, so when you, let's see, um, so when you get to your house as an adult, how did that all start to you know, like transpire? When did you? It's It's been an ongoing thing all of my life. You know, even when I lived inside a major city, it was nothing for us to walk out back and have huge, gigantic footprints outside a bedroom window. Oh, wow. But I, always, I lived in a home at the time I shared with my brother and it was completely wooded all around us, even though we were in Antioch. And anybody knows anything about Antioch, Tennessee is pretty yeah. congested. Yes. Um, the same area in Antioch is where Sheree and I had to experience my best friend where she hurt her foot. She got hit by infrasound oh, and I had to help her back out of the forest in the, because her entire house was just, it was about 15 or 12, 12 or 15 acres of heavily forested area that backed up to the old R&R &R railroad. And when we stepped right into the open is when Kokomo, the one I call Kokomo, who lives here, stepped out into the open, eight, 10 feet from us making sure she was okay. And that was her first experience of just full on right in my face. Here he is. Wow. So wow. It, it, it doesn't matter where you live. If they have attached themselves to you, oh, they will check on you from time to time. Okay. Right. I lived in the Cedars of Lebanon State Park for 13 years before I moved here. 
And of course, it was heavy, heavily secluded. I could ride my horse out of my driveway and wow. be in 26,000 acres of, of forest, of trails. So it was nothing to see to see them and then hear them and find their, their tracks all around me when I was there. So moving from the forest to here was only 30 minute drive. So what, 20 miles, mm. 25 miles, not that far. Yeah, that's And nothing. I told my father when we moved here, I said, they're here. Because the first day that I woke up, we had we were staying in this house before we had the power on, but we had a fireplace. It was in January of 2008. And I go to the bathroom and look out, and it has snowed during the night. And there's a track that is probably 20 inches long. Wow. Right outside the bathroom window. I said, they're here, honey. Wow. <laughs> And I went and told my dad, I said, they followed us here. He said, you're crazy. They did not. There's just absolutely no way. Well, the following spring, as low and behold as would be, he's bush hogging, going across a plateau of flat land with really high grass. It's right behind my house. And he said, so you see, Rose, I tapped that, topped that plateau, a black one. He said it was about five, five and a half feet tall. Threw itself just face down into the grass, just spread it as he went by it with the bush hog just looking over at him like this. Oh, wow. <laughs> they said, you're right, sissy. They followed you here. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> oh, hey, um, Russell East, Russell has another question. Did, he said, did they smell bad? Only if they've been startled. Only if oh. they want you to go back in the house. Um, okay. I've been time, several times I've walked out back and I'm just been like, mm, and I'll yeah. say, shoo, you stink, stop it. And instantly, instantly the smell is gone. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Oh, you know, when I was charged by that big female and we were within fit, foot and a half of each other, I didn't notice any bad foul smell at all. The only thing I noticed was not like body sweat. Like maybe someone had had a shower in a day or two. Oh, wow. But, wow. but there was nothing that, that was just obnoxiously, horrifically bad smelling. And what I have noticed that does smell bad are the dog bed. Oh, okay. They do tend to to have a smell. And what's that? What is what do they smell like? Garbage and dead meat, rotted meat. Oh gosh. Not wow. all of them, but several of them that I have come in contact with have that smell. So I don't know if they've rolled in something. I don't know. Uh -huh. you know how dogs will roll into something dead. I don't know if that's what it smells like. Okay. Um, and they're on your property as, as well. well. Yeah. They yeah. Are. Yeah. Um, did they, did they come at the same time as the, or? No, you know, they... up in, five years ago, I would have laughed at anybody that said there's a such thing as a dog man. Really? I would have laughed at them. And I grew up with a clan of Bigfoot. I should have known that they were, but I had never seen one, never seen one around the family oh. ever. And I've had many encounters mm -hmm. um, up close in your face encounters, but the first time I saw a dog man, it's the fastest I've ever unbuckled a seatbelt and moved across the seat of a truck in my entire life. My husband and I were traveling a back road that runs right beside a river that's not far from my house. And it's a very curvy road. See, 40, 45 is max, unless you want to have an accident. It's just really bad. But at one point, it runs right beside the river. And I'm sitting there talking to him. It's just gotten dark. And I look over and I see something come out of the out of the river, through the the, the tall grass, just booking it, just moving it. I'm like, is that a squat? And I'm still looking right as it comes up beside our truck and starts pacing our truck, and it's right beside the passenger's door where I'm at. It's facing the the rearview mirror of the truck, and it's just running, keeping a pace with us, running 40, 45 mile per hour. Oh my god. I mean, I hit the lock on that door. I hit the unlock on that seatbelt. And I was beside my husband in, in a split second screaming, wow. that's not a Sasquatch. Wow. That's not a square Sasquatch. That's a FN werewolf. Wow. <laughs> wow. And I was screaming it. I was just like, I was just, I could not believe what I was singing. What did it I look said, like? Oh, you just this thing in yeah, this. He said, describe it. Seeing this. And I was just like. Are you are you seeing this? He said, "Honey, I see it." I said, "Go faster, go faster." He said, "Baby, yeah. I can't go any faster." <gasps> oh. So for about a mile and a half, two miles, it ran right beside us. It knew I was looking at. It. In fact, at one point, 
I got a little bit brave and I got up on my knees and leaned up as far as I could and looking out and down just to oh see God. what this thing was. So that's why I said, Daryl didn't have a tail. And it was not running one foot in front of the other like a human would run. I said, it was lunging. It was hopping. I said, the best way I can describe it is it was hopping like a kangaroo. It was oh lunging on both feet, hitting the ground and lunging up, both feet hitting the ground. And wow. it was keeping pace with that truck. We were in my husband's Ford F-150. Wow. And, yeah, and it was a young one, thankfully, because its shoulder and head was above the window. So that would have put it about five and a half feet tall, okay. maybe six feet. But you could tell by how slender it was and how slender built it was, although it's muscular, that it was a young one. And it was just and like what? it was saying, hey, I'm here. How you doing? Oh my, really? I, okay. I was like, oh, my God. Okay. There's a such thing as a dog man. Oh. Clueless. And that's oh, when I started wow. researching what they were. Yeah. But you would think with all of the UFO activity <laughs> and the Sasquatch activity that I've had my entire life, I would have mm -hmm. been enlightened a little bit earlier in life as to the existence of a lichen or a, a dogman like creature. Mm -hmm. But anyway, what do you th that was what do you think they are? What what do you think that the dogmen are? I do not know. Yeah. <laughs> I know there is old Sasquatch. You know, they're, they're written about in Marco Polo and they're written about in ancient mm -hmm. Egyptian texts. Mm -hmm. I mean, they go way back. You know, any of the anything you read about Atlantis, about what they were doing with splicing genetics with with animals and human like DNA. I do not know. Mm -hmm. I know they're highly intelligent. I know they can do mind speak just like the Sasquatch family. I would not be a bit surprised if there is some human DNA in there somewhere, just like with a Sasquatch. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't surprise me at all. Their intelligence is unbelievable. Do they hang with the Sasquatch? You know, they, they there's there's one, and I and they call him Joe Seppi. Joe Joe Seppi. Okay. He has apparently was raised with my family, but oh. they kept him away because on. Just being around them was enough for me to absorb. They felt like it would just be too much of a shock to throw him into the mix. Oh. But five years ago, when I saw that young one, is when apparently an entire family of them migrated toward this area. So there's a they have a a border of of like a no, neither one of us is going to go right here. We'll stay oh. on this side, and you stay over here. Unfortunately, they both can still see me. And everything that goes on. Wow. But, you know, I've had some scary <laughs> experiences with those. Just, just terrifying. Um, do you want to tell us about, oh, I, I did, I had a question though, the, the, um, the dog man that you saw running alongside of the truck, um, what did he look like? He was dark gray uh, with black mingled in. He looked okay. very much like uh, a German shepherd head. Oh, okay. It looked very much like a German Shepherd. His chest was a lighter color with white and more tan colors blending through. There okay. wasn't quite as much hair on his stomach and abdomen area from what I could see. Okay. Um, he had long, narrow, skinny arms, but yet they were muscular. Okay. And I didn't see paws. I okay. saw like this. So I'm assuming oh. it was fingers. Mm -hmm. okay. um, he was wow. lunging and hopping through the grass. So I really couldn't see because I'm leaning over trying to peek. So I really yeah. couldn't see his feet very well. But I could just see that he was picking them both up at the same time and lunging and then keep it was just a total lunge. Wow. Um there was so a Russell large has one. a question. Have you ever yeah. seen Bigfoot eat anything? Nothing other than the cornbread I make them. They <laughs> like cornbread. And they like cake and they like cookies. But as far as seeing them eat meat, eat another animal, no. Now, I have run across carcasses that they, apparently it was them that did it. But, um, and that we've had several deer taken from my husband. He would hunt, see the deer go down, know it bled out, come down out of his stand, go up there to get it, and it's vanished. There's no blood wow, trail, yeah. there's no tracks, nothing. Something just picked it up and took off with it. He's lost past three deer that he's killed. He finally wow. said, I'm not going to hunt anymore. After the last time they... They flanked him and ran him out of the woods. Oh, wow. 
scared him half to death. They were topping the trees, pushing him over and growling at him, pushing him out of the woods. Wow. So he said, that's the last time I will ever hunt here. Oh. And he hasn't how, done any hunting. How close was that? So that was on your property or close to your it property? It was on neighbor's property behind us. Okay. There's a hundred mm -hmm. acres that borders my father's farm and Bobby was over on that farm. So he wasn't that far from home. Yeah. Wow. But I felt, I'm sure he felt like in the moment that he wasn't close enough to the house because of the way they flanked him. It was so bad that our white Pyrenees, which was a full grown mountain Pyrenees had, had tracked him to where he was. He was up under a cedar tree and down in between uh, two big boulders. And she dove down on top of him quivering and whining. And wow. that's when he decided it was time to go to the house. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Uh, Ed O'Dell said, now, was it um, Bigfoot or was it Skinwalkers? I I'm was... Not Skinwalkers. Okay. I've only I seen used... Bigfoot and I have seen, of course, the alien entities, which I sent you a video of that. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. I have seen the, the dog men. Okay. But right. no Skinwalkers. So, no Skinwalkers. Um what do you think, um, Bigfoot, what do you think that Bigfoot are? What do you think that they are? I think they're ancient. I think they were here before we were even created, before we were even here. I think their their intelligence and the ability they have to manipulate energy and sound mm -hmm. and frequency is far beyond the, the human's ability to comprehend, much less do. Um, I think they were brought here from an, another world somewhere. Is what mm -hmm. I honestly think, especially with all of the UFO activity that I've had, that they were brought here to work, to mine, to help build cities for whatever reason. And then they were eventually freed from that. Uh, Linda Judd said she wonders if they are the missing link, but I don't think that's what you're saying, right? You're not. No. Yeah, I don't. No. I don't. Mm -mm. Yeah. Mm -mm. You, have to really you know, that work. other part of their DNA that they have no clue what it is, mm -hmm. is from somewhere else. And it's their original mm -hmm. DNA. Yes. Um, yeah. The the human part of it that they're picking up on is where over the millennia, they have interbred with human, with the human species, females probably. And and the off, off, offspring carry mm -hmm. that mixed DNA, but the original ones it's going to carry that unknown DNA because they have no idea where it came from. And it mm -hmm. came from another world, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is in line with the, the um, Sasquatch genome mm -hmm. project, you know, with the results, the DNA results. Mm -hmm. I got to plug my it computer is. in. So, my, um, yeah, the, ahead, my I'm first sorry. time my father saw a Sasquatch was on a ship. Oh, he was actually taken onto a ship and introduced oh. to it. And, and he said, you can touch it, walk around and look at it. This will be in your life and this will be in your child's life. And at the time, dad didn't know what he was talking about. Oh, and he wow. walked around it on the ship. And daddy said it was the biggest thing he'd ever seen in his life. And he was petrified. It was during one of his abduc abduction events that happened to him in the 74, 75, somewhere in there. So that was his introduction. So that was my clue that, oh yeah, that's who brought them here for sure. Yeah. Oh, wow. we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to do a show on, on, yeah, the, on the alien. Right? Dude, dude. My gosh! Um, wow. Ladies um, and gentlemen, we'll be right back. Stay yeah. tuned. <laughs>
back, ladies and gentlemen. Another dish brought to you by Western Kentucky Bigfoot Investigators LLC by Don Wyden. Thank you, sir. Paranormal. Yes, thank you. Uh, don't worry, it. he is paranormal too. But yeah, yeah, so everybody's agreeing with you there. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's a very good point. Very interesting, that's for sure. Mm -hmm, they very. do look human. Someone just said this reports that many of the ETs look very human. They do. Um, the ones that I've had the most interaction with are extremely tall. I would say they could pick me up and I'm look like a child in their arms. So that's putting them about nine or 10 feet tall, but they look completely human. Completely look like just me and you. Wow. They're just extremely wow. tall. Now wow. I also have had interactions with the grays, which is on that video. Yeah. Okay. And they're not so friendly. They're not the ones that you want to come knocking at your door and say, hello, come here. Okay. Every right. time I've ever had that experience, I've woken up with implants, cuts, mm -hmm. marks on my body, and, and um, with no, no way to ex explain it, I've woken up with frozen shoulders, bones that feel like they've been broken. Oh, my and, God. Yeah, you don't want them knocking at your door. Wow. But unfortunately... When it seems like when the other ETs, if that's what they are, they could be from hollow earth or they could be from a uni another universe. We just don't know it all. Mm -hmm. Once they've got interest, the others do too. And you've got uh, the good and you've got the bad and you've got the ugly. Mm -hmm. And the grays that they that have the long spindly arms and long spindly legs, those are ones I consider the ugly. Mm, okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Linda said, yeah, had a run in with a bunch of grays, had a medium verify that one. Okay, yeah. Yeah, they're bad. Yeah. I can remember, you know, we have these memories from our childhood, and you, you wonder how can we remember that far back. But it, one of my first memories is I'm in a crib, and I'm standing up screaming at the top of my lungs, and there's a bright white light coming toward the bedroom window, and then it opens, and then four of these gray, spindly looking monsters to a, oh, to a wow. small child, you know come bursting through and I remember hearing myself screaming and then nothing. I have no more memory of that. Oh, and wow. that is one of my first memories of that actually happening. Oh my gosh. But I had a real bad case of missing time in 86. Yeah. 1986, two weeks before I had a car crash and I died many, many times. Oh. The two weeks after that I spent in a coma but they they brought me back to life so many times I lost count. But the I had to go under hypnosis in order to bring back the abduction experience. And I was on the way to my father's, and I crossed on the Hobson Pike Bridge in uh, Davidson County. And it was daylight when I popped onto the bridge, and it was dark when I exited the bridge. So instantly oh, something was wrong because the radio had been off, and it was off. And then it was off when we we exited the bridge. So your mind goes instantly when you've dealt with this all your life, instantly your mind goes click, they got you. Mm -hmm. But I, I had two hours missing time. I had no clue what in the world had happened. I had a really good friend of mine put me under hypnosis, Don Odom, and he's a member of our group. And mm -hmm. um, Don brought it back that they were under the bridge. They came up, put me up, car and all. And the reason was that they said, that they were, I was at a point in my life where my, they did not know if my soul was going to choose to stay or go, and my bloodline had to continue. Oh, so wow. they harvested eggs. They harvested my eggs. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Wow. Two weeks later, three days in a row, I have the dream of my car crash before I have it. And, and still, I have that crash. Oh. So it was, it was, yeah, it was one of those where you go in, you see the light. And you oh realize, my. oh, this is what it's all about. It was one of those deals. Wow. Yeah. So they knew. They knew that the accident was going to happen. So what mm -hmm. kind of evolved oh mind and technology? Yeah. How, how could they have known that? Wow. Yeah. You have to ask yourself, well, did they cause it? Did they plan it? Mm -hmm. Or do they know how to somehow see into the future? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. But that happened. Wow. Um, what do you, do you have any questions, Grizzly? I'm just like, no, oh, you're, you know, you're yep. asking them all for me. So Ooh, I never good. heard that. That one's wow. That's amazing. When um, I came awake from that coma, 
I had to learn how to walk again, speak oh. again, and use my right arm because I had massive head trauma. Wow. So yeah, it was it was quite the experience. Wow. Um, yeah, we are definitely gonna have to do we're gonna have to do a show on that too. <laughs> but that also brought all the paranormal stuff too with it. Oh. Because you cross over like that and you come back. Yeah. They can still see your light from there, from what we call heaven home. Uh -huh. And they, they will come and visit and try to ask for help. You know, it's how a lot of mediums will work. And, you know, oh. you have to learn how to shut that down and, and protect yourself and block yourself from those energies. Okay. I see. For sure. Wow. Wow. Yeah. We've talked talk about that too. Um, all right. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This is so incredible, Jennifer. Oh, my gosh. All right. All right. Let's see. So, um, Tell us about, um, and if anybody has any questions, please put them in the down in the remarks, um, and we will be sure to ask. Um, oh, okay. So occasionally you gift them, right, with some food. Right? Oh, the, yes, at least the once a week. The big yeah, yeah, at least yeah. once a week. I make the old-fashioned cornbread. I have a 12-inch cast iron skillet I've had since I was 14 years old. So I use okay. bacon drippings, make their cornbread, put sugar in it. Put a little drizzle, a little honey on top, and haul it up there. And I chop it up in little pieces, and haul. I save the little ice cream buckets. You know, my oh. husband would buy like a half a gallon or a gallon at a time. You know, and I save those buckets, and I will take it up there to the gifting spot, and I'll hang it on the limb. I say, "All right, baby, some magic bread. I love oh. you and enjoy it." And I mean, you can hear them bucking, really? bucking. <laughs> there was one day I took it up there, and I guess they were in the creek in front of my house, and you heard rocks falling and. And all of a sudden, you heard the most awful squabble. I mean, two of them were fighting over who was going to get to that tree first. It was hysterical. Oh. But it's amazing what you can witness when you're the only one here. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Tell us about um, about the the time when you um, switched the rum cake. With the rum. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I had fixed. A carrot cake and a rum cake for Christmas. And we'd only ate half of each. So I say, okay, I'm going to take the carrot cake <laughs> up to the tree for the gifted tree. They all enjoy the cake. Well, they looked a lot alike. And I wouldn't pay any attention. So I chopped up one of the cakes and I put it in the bucket and I took it up to the gifted tree. And my husband and I are sitting. And it was a warm part of winter. It must have been that January where it was really, really warm. But we had our back door open. And then our sofa was facing the back door. And we sit down to eat our dinner. And Bobby said, what the? <laughs> and I look up. And there goes one on all fours. He's shaking his little head just like this. Oh my God. And he's wobbling from side to side, running on all four. And I'm like, what <laughs> in God's name? And we get up and we run outside. And, we, and then it hit me. And I busted out laughing. I said, oh, my God, Bobby, I took him the rum cake. I didn't take him the damn carrot cake. He's drunk. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And he was just a squabbling. Oh, he was so mad. He was just a squabbling and shaking that little head. I've got a really good picture of him. I forgot to send it to y'all. But I got a picture of him a, a, few, a couple of years later. He's coming out from behind the, the gifting tree and he's on all fours and he sort of turns his head like this. And he's, um, he's reddish brown, but his arms are black. So he's like two tone. So he took, he had his face over his head like this hysterical. But, <laughs> yeah. The very next day I made cornbread and I took it up there. And I said, I'm so sorry, baby. I, I did not mean to get you drunk. <laughs> I Wonder forgot to get the wrong cake. Yeah, the poor thing. <laughs> and don't think they can't understand us because they can understand every word we say. Mm -hmm. They understand us whether we speak English, Spanish, Greek, Italian. It don't matter. They sure do. Do you have, do they mind speak with you? Yes, they do. And they dream yeah. speak. You know, oh. they know that, um, that Bobby had his little uh, introduction to grandmother, Asia, yeah, she was busy doing dream speak with me as I was sleeping in the house. And she was projecting in my mind, in my sleep, that he was laying beside me asleep and she was going to bite his head off. And I was like, no, no, you can't do that. They'll put me in a cage for the rest of my life. And I showed her a picture of me in a birdcage. That's the only thing my dreaming mind could come up with. She said, well, I just eat him like a bear. 
and they have the unique ability to dislocate or somehow dislocate this lower jaw and make it drop down to where their mouth gets humongous. Oh. And she did that. She said, I'll bite his head off like a bear. And literally, she could have fit his head in her mouth. Oh, my gosh. I was like, no, you can't. No, you can't do that. They'll put me away forever. And well, right about then, Bobby is shaking me awake. And he's petrified, babbling, trying to tell me what has just happened to him outside. And I'm just, and I just all I can do is laugh. Once again, I cracked completely up. I said, "That's what you get." Pardon me for being an ass. <laughs> now maybe you won't do that again. She's like teaching you a lesson. I said, "Let me tell you about the dream I was just having." And I told him, and he was just like, "You got to be kidding me." I said, "No, I'm not kidding you." What, what happened what was he got up in the middle of the night, let his old dog go outside, and she vanished. Well, he was naked as a jaybird. And he goes outside. He goes outside. He's going all the way around the house, clapping his hands like this, saying, "Here, Dixie, here, Dixie." My old dog's smart. She didn't got up under the porch. She wasn't coming out. <laughs> and he walked all the way around the house and walked over to the side fence. And there was an old walnut tree there and an old am tree, I believe it was. And Grandmother Asia was squatted down on her legs. She was facing the woods with her back toward him, but she wasn't four, three or four foot from the fence. And she stood up. Oh. And he's standing there like this. And she turned around and looked at him and bared all of her teeth and roared at him. You know how deep oh and guttural those roars are. Oh and God. then she started walking back toward the field to the fence, but never took her eyes off him. Well, his instant reaction was, hell with the dog. I'm going in the house because he, yeah. by this time, he is tore all to pieces. The reason she did that is that very night before we went to bed, we had a knockdown drag out. You know how married folks are. Yeah, yeah. We've been married mm -hmm. 22 years, so we've yeah. had some good ones. Well, yeah. we had a good one that night, oh. and I had got tired of his harping, so I had gone outside, crossed the fence, gone up to the tree line, and I was standing there like this. You think you're so bad? Come right up here to these trees, and we'll finish this fight right now. <laughs> he didn't come to the trees. She came to him later that night. <laughs> she that was, was the last fight we've ever had, too. And so, you know. <laughs> Like, honey, I'm going to call in my, my Sasquatch. No. You mess with me, I'm going to call grandmother. What you going to do? <laughs> yes, that happened. Oh, uh, wow. My poor husband, it's, it's a story I wrote up in our group. It's called Naked Man Running. <laughs> and Daryl Denton told me, he said, God, wish you would write a book. And please name it Naked Man Running. Or you'll sell every copy if you name it Naked Man Running. I said, that's a good <laughs> idea, Daryl. I might do that, Dave. Yeah, that's great. Wow. <laughs> it was hysterical it was I, I laughed until i just i just was weeping because it was so funny because that's when i realized okay dream speak and mind speak are the same thing and she really was telling me that yeah it's funny you said that or ironic i guess because um we have heard other people say and i've heard um witnesses say about that that their jaw i mean i didn't i wasn't thinking about them being able to you know like unhinge it but that it gets so big um you, you've seen snakes do it yeah yeah and is that it's, what? It, it's somehow it's a mechanism with their jaw it, it really drops it down it's almost like it dislocates wow. and it makes the mouth just huge and that was the wow. first time i had ever seen one of them do that wow so, but that explains to me why they have such the elongated jaw wow. but yes they can do that yeah um standing stones asks is is raising a point um when it's all said and done is gifting feeding the sasquatch bad because of the issues that can arise what do you think about that <laughs> it would depend on the family clan okay. now when the dog men arrived they instructed me to stop coming to the woods oh. so you know for a very long time there i didn't take them anything you know if i took them any cornbread i would take it out back around behind my barn and put it up high where no other critters could get it and sometimes they would take it and sometimes they wouldn't but, you know, they did not want me going in those woods. In fact, they have hit me with infrasound to keep me from going into the woods and turn me around and send me back to the house. Oh, and believe wow. me, that's painful. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so you said that, so they don't, they don't, um, you don't think that they get along 
together or except for that one maybe that was raised why do you think the one was raised by the i think Giuseppe was raised with them i think he's been with them forever because you know it seems to be a lot of times i mean i've got a picture i'll share with you and they're together in it um so they've been together for a long time one with the clan as acceptable but as far as the whole group the two groups coming together they've got that middle boundary there that's just like no man's land neither one of them go there yeah yeah and they seem to have drawn that little boundary after my encounter i had right behind my house with a dog man i walked right up on one i was 20 foot from it and the entire time i'm looking at this thing and he, <clears throat> and i'm looking at how high his head is to a spot that's broken on the tree so mentally i can go back next day or two and see how tall he was so i can measure but the whole time i'm looking at his eyes and he's looking at mine I'm feeling attack or run. That was the only two thoughts he was having. He didn't know whether to attack me or run. Uh -huh. And luckily, for I had a bucket of cornbread in my hands. I was going to the gifting tree, and I set it down on the ground. I never took my eyes off of him. I said, if you're hungry, there's some bread. And I just quietly started backing away, never turned around, never took my eyes off of him, just slowly backed away from it. Until I was a good 50 yards away, then I turned and I went to the house. And then I haven't been to the gifting tree since. Okay. Oh, really? Because that was, once I got home, oh. it, it took hours for me to stop shaking because I, I was feeling his thoughts more than hearing them. And that feeling was attack or run. Mm -hmm. And you could see his eyes working. His mind was working in his eyes. And I was just like, and it definitely was not that small one that was running beside us. This one looked totally different and was much larger. We measured it at just a little hair over seven feet. Oh, so and can yeah, you just was, try, describe this one that you saw? Um, what color? And you know, he and, and, was a lighter gray with the black mingled in. He looked a lot like a, a timber wolf. Oh, uh, the, the only difference is his ears were a little bit longer uh, mm -hmm. and more pointed, and um, had a long snout. He had a big open mouth. He was narrow through his chest. His his shoulders were forward like this instead of how we hold ours. And I noticed that he was, of course, he was standing on two legs. And I noticed the flaps of the skin right there below the waist where the, the legs sort of join the hips. It was it was kind of loose, like when you stretch it, like when you hold up your puppy dog and rub his belly. Oh, what wow. What their legs look like back there. That's yeah. what it looked like. Oh, my um, gosh. You could see the muscles in the, the chest and the abdomen he was real narrow through the abdomen but broader through the the chest and the, the shoulders his arms were muscular but they weren't massive like like with the sasquatch family mm -hmm. i mean an arm on a sasquatch gonna be like this wow okay. and on him was like this so it was a huge difference there mm -hmm. from the knee up he had massive thighs but mm -hmm. the calves weren't they were muscle but they weren't that large okay so you could tell he's definitely built for running on four or two. Mm -hmm. okay. He's definitely standing on two. You think he, and so did he and also he have like, fingers? Yeah, he yeah, that's fingers. what I was, okay. And he had oh. long nails on him and he had, did not have a tail. I know a lot of people report these things having a tail, but the two that I've been up close and personal to, it did, did not. not have a tail. Okay. Mm -mm. Um, Linda Judd is asking, um, did you, have you named your SAS? Your, your squatches? They all have names. Okay. Uh, some of them are their actual names. Like okay. the one I call grandmother, her actual name is Asia. The okay. the alpha male, his name is actually Sky Mountain because he's as large as a mountain. He's the largest thing I've ever seen. Wow. My youngest son uh, saw him walk out of a creek one day. And he, he was parked on his four-wheeler and he walked out of the creek. He was about 10 feet from David, looked him right in the eye, took two steps across a paved road, stepped into a ditch over a fence and then tried to hide behind a tree that was only a quarter of his size. He said, mama, his head, like I had a top knot of hair on the top of his head. He said, mama, he hid it on the underside of that branch right there. So I went back when I was with him, I had brought a measuring tape with me and I could see the wet footprint still on the road because he walked out of the creek. And I went over there and measured. And we shot the, the measuring tape up to the underside of that branch to the ground. It was 14 feet, nine inches. Oh my gosh. Whoa. Now the alpha female, uh, Asia 
Bobby said he's an easy, easy 13 and 14 feet tall because he's <gasps> wow. six foot two and he oh was like this looking at him. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And he said she's easy six foot across at her shoulders. I said, yeah, I've seen her up close and personal. I know how big she is. Wow. I didn't know that they were that big in the, in the South. Did you know that, Grizzly? I, I wasn't aware. Are Most, bigger because of yeah. the food and, yeah. and the farmland. Yeah. But wow. you can you can walk from my house and as a thirty it's thirty miles as a as a crow flies, but and you can walk from my house and go all the way to the, the dam to the lake and never see another house. It's mm. all wooded and forested and very secluded. We're in the least populated county in the state as far as humans. Wow. So and there's a river that runs right down there's a branch of the river that runs right in front of my house. And there's another creek that runs the back side of my house. So I'm surrounded by water. Yeah. And uh, deer, there's nothing to see a herd of 15 or 20 deer. And you know they're terrified because they're sleeping in the pasture beside your horse under the nightlight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so something has definitely got them terrified and run out of the hills. Yeah. That happens a lot. Have the Sasquatch ever uh, messed with your horses? You know, done. I've had them give them witch braids. Okay, I was going to ask yeah. that. Yeah, in the tail, of the mane. Yeah, and the, and there was one night, I stepped outside, and I, I was looking at the fence, and then it was on the side of the property where the Gifton tree's at, and my horse is white, so he shows up really well at night, and I noticed he's like in a daze, and he's going up and down this fence of like a forty foot, forty five foot distance he turned around he'd come back and i got to looking and i got to looking and i got to laughing i could see a long skinny black leg on one side of him he was being ridden oh my one god one of the young ones was riding him <laughs> <laughs> but they had apparently either he's not afraid of them or they had him under some kind of control because he was he's a proven pacifino so you know they're spirited Oh, and he's just like in a trance going up and down this fence a good four or five times. And I just shake my head and I go back in the house and I said, it had to be Maluka. Oh my There's one here. I call Maluka. He, um, I, as I was going out onto the back porch one night, he had just run across my back, back deck and down two steps and he stopped and he froze. And I froze as I shut the door and I'm like, it's okay, baby. I'm not going to hurt you. And then he opened that mouth and he started a scream oh, that, God. that I was like this down on my knees on that porch. Uh, please stop. You're hurting me. You're hurting me. Please. It was so painful because it was so loud. Oh. It was such a, a piercing scream. Oh, and out of the woods, I hear a big male scream out. Maluka. And he, oh. stopped. And he wow. stopped. Right as his mother, who was a blonde, came around the corner of the house and, and he went running to her. But I couldn't hear right for a week. Wow. I've never heard such a piercing, bone-shattering scream in my entire life. I could feel my body vibrating from it. Wow. But I, I started then, from then on calling him Maluka. I thought, well, that must be his name. I yeah. looked it up. It means crazy. I don't know if it's oh. Portuguese or Spanish, but it means crazy. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I think he was the one in the woods just saying, stop it, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> So maybe that's just a, yeah, not his actual name, but the dad was just, yeah. But I still oh, just call him Maluka. I mean, it's yeah. stuck. It's stuck like glue. I was, you'll oh, never, I'll never cute. call you anything else. How old do you think that, that he is? He was probably about three or four at the time because I'm five foot tall and he was a good foot and a half shorter than me. Okay. But he had enough air in those lungs to put me on my knees oh like my this. Gosh. Wow. Mm -hmm. And mm. it just kept coming. There was no taking a break or another breath. It just kept coming. Wow. And it, you could feel it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like a vibration. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, somebody, I saw a question in the. In the yes. Uh, let's oh, see how many here. years have you known? This is one of them. How many years have you known of Sky Mountain and all? I guess right. um, she means the dog. Man. Well, I'm 57. And Sky, uh, for my first encounter with him when I was about three, so oh, okay. four oh. years. Oh, okay, all right. Oh, wait. So Sky Mountain is is he's the alpha male now. The alpha male. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I was thinking. Um, all right, all right. Um, yeah, I was thinking of the dog. I don't know. Um, okay. Oh, all right. And he is Asia's um 
son. Is that what you yeah. said? Yes. She's a, okay. He's, he's her son. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. And it is in ten. This is in Tennessee. Um, somebody's asking. Yes. In Tennessee. In Tennessee. In East Tennessee. Okay. East Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Um. All right. Uh. Yeah. So was it when he was doing that scream? Have you heard that scream? Um. You know when people will you know like have recordings of audio. Have you heard that at all? Nope. Okay. Wow. Because it's, a, it's a bone chilling scream. It, wow. it, you feel it with every hair on your body. Yeah. You feel it with every part of you. And oh. no matter how hard you clamp your hands over your ears, there's no stopping it. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah it, like it was, it was, I'd rather been hit with infrasound than have them, one of them do that to me again. Because so it have was you, extremely painful. Wow. Um, have you been hit, obviously, then with infrasound? And then ex yeah. explain like what happened with that. Or has yeah. it happened a lot? or It's only happened twice. Once okay. it happened, um, I was about three miles across the ridge. I was hiking alone. But I did have my dog with me. And they hit me in the, the, the chest area. And mm. I, I saw it when it was coming. It was like a ball of light, like an orb of wow. light. Like the, uh, a spirit orb. But it was brighter white. And I saw it coming. In and I said, oh, no. I knew it was going to. And it hit me right here, right here in the chest. And it put me to the ground. And I stayed there for a good 30 or 40 minutes and I almost lost all control of my bowels because it, it instantly affected that part of my body. Oh, wow. That was one of the worst ones. And then um, I was going to go out hiking and I told him, I'm going to come out hiking. I'm tired of being trapped on this little farm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go walk the ridge today. And I had walked out. I had my walking stick. I just, walked, just stepped off my back porch. This was just a few months ago. And I saw a, a, a female that was a real pretty a reddish brown. Well, she had really long hair on her arms oh. and on her upper body. And I saw her lean out from a tree 40 yards away. And I saw another little white light coming at me. And I tried to sidestep it, but I didn't. And it hit me right here. Oh my I dropped gosh. on the porch. The whole world started spinning. And it still got sick at my stomach because I was so dizzy. And it took me two probably two hours of laying in bed to recover from it. Oh and I saw God. it coming. It's just like it, she flipped it like this out of her hand. Oh my gosh. Wow. And it was an actual ball of light that, that I could see. It was a very small ball of light. Yeah. About, about wow. the size of a little rubber ball. Jeez. And it knocked me on my butt. Wow. But they were determined. I was not coming in the woods. It was too dangerous. Is that why you think that they were keeping you I out? Know that's why they did it. They told me so. What so did they, like, what did, I will listen to you from now on, but they what don't did they want, say to you. They they just said danger, no, oh, oh. and it was that simple. Danger, no. I'm like, I'm listening. I hear you now. Don't do that again, please. I mean, it made me sick. Do you have any idea what what they you know what's creating the danger? Is it the is it? It's the dog men. Dog it's the, it, it is some of the dog men that were here, um, and. Apparently, they're not the real friendly kind, okay. and they did not, did not want me taking any chances on getting hurt. Okay. So, do you think that the dog men come and go, or they also have that? Okay. I think they, they move around, and I think they take a claim a, a certain territory, but they do mm. move about and move, move around some, but I'm not talking a big radius. It's a, it's a very small radius, and this is prime hunting ground for, for any kind of cryptid. We've got every kind of waterfowl. We've got every kind of fish. Frog, snake, every kind of wild fruit, plums, uh, pawpaw fruit, uh, deer, turkey. I mean, you name it. It's, it's wildlife galore here. Mm -hmm. We used to have a huge population of coyotes, but they've about taken care of that. Oh. <laughs> you rarely hear a coyote now. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Um, let me see. Um, I want to see if I have... Do you think do, 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 what with the um, with your house, do you think that um, was there something there before mm -hmm. that? OK, it just mm -hmm. when you moved in, it was just that was what was kind of right. OK, mm -hmm. all right. Yeah, oh, we right. moved in and it was a it was a limestone cliff and we took 22 oh, wow. loads of clay dirt and built up to it and then built a foundation and put our house on it. Oh, wow. So, I mean, it was just part of father's pasture until wow. we moved here. And That's, in fact, dad had not had any activity at all that he could remember until I moved here. He said, wow. thanks a lot. I said, you're very welcome. 
<laughs> Glad I can help you, Dad. <laughs> so do you do you have do um do any of your kids? You said you had have a son, and you don't have to you know just divulge this, but like, do any of your kids have um, experiences? Yes, or my youngest son David has had many. Um, oh, okay. He uh, he's the one that was on the four wheeler and saw him crawl come mm -hmm. out of the creek, look at him, and then try to hide behind a tree that was this big around. Yeah. And sky was the size of a mountain. He said, Mom, wow. go away. And he was just a babbling when he got home. So I said, Okay, I'm gonna grab the, the tape measure and we'll go check this out. Well, the prints were still there because he'd stepped out of the creek onto the pavement and the, the footprints were still there. I'm like, This kid's telling me the truth. And I and I knew he was. And yeah. uh, but he's had several encounters. He had an really close encounter where he he said mama one minute there was a wall in the hallway of our house and the next it was outside that's the only way i can describe it he said and that big black sky came through the hole in that wall wiggled his way through my bedroom door and went down all fours and came over to me and said tell her feed us not him <laughs> and my ass my name's sky not grumpy Apparently, oh. David had been calling him grumpy because <laughs> when he howls at night and screams, and you can hear it all through these hills and hollers, it sounds kind of grumpy. Yeah. And apparently, Sky didn't appreciate it very much. <laughs> the reason he said, tell her feed us, not him, is Bobby, the day before, had taken the cornbread bucket to the tree. Well, unknowing oh. to me, he had stood up there and put a piece of cornbread in his mouth and said, mmm, good, my bread. Oh, no. <laughs> I think you heard about what happened there, didn't you? No, tell us, tell us. <laughs> Next morning, he goes out and get ready to go to work. He's got his brand new little tennis shoes on, they're cute little white tennis shoes. He comes back in carrying one of them, is covered in poo, and I'm in covered in poo. <gasps> and they had taken a poop beside his truck door, and they had somehow gotten into his truck, I guess through the back window, oh my God. and they had pooped behind his driver's seat. <gasps> oh, no! And we're talking big poop, like human-looking poop. So he steps in this poop at his truck door and loses his balance and slides into this three strands of barbed wire in between him and the horse. Oh, and no. He's trying to get his balance, and he's got all this poop all over his shoe, so he just has to kick it off. He comes in holding it like, like here, honey. And I'm like, here, honey, hell, there's a trash can. You don't want to eat the cornbread. <laughs> Yeah, was it worth that? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> it has oh been uh, it has been something else. The life with the <laughs> interacting wow. with these beings has been absolutely something else. And and they must really like my sense of humor because yeah. they love it to make me laugh, I apparently. Wow. So they, my so husband has had encounters, my youngest son has had encounters. <laughs> you know, it's just Wow. It is what it is. And, they and seem Sky to refers you. to David as brother. So, oh, really? I mean, he oh, loves little sweet. David like a brother. Oh, so. that's sweet. Wow. Yeah. But how but, um, crazy, which is, oh, oh, we know how exactly how big that is. Okay. Yeah. The Bigfoot poop. Yeah. <laughs> he was fresh, too. So that made him better. <laughs> and not only did I make him put the shoe in the trash, I said, take the trash out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't leave it in this house. Because <laughs> <laughs> Grizzly, tell her about you. He had a guess that you can explain to her what happened with the. With he the found what it leaves behind, ladies and gentlemen. He said it was so big it wouldn't fit in his cooler. He had to break it in half. Yep. And then it's it big. stuck up his truck for three days and he put <laughs> it in his freezer. He's like, don't tell my wife it's still there. Can you imagine how bad Bobby's truck smelled with that poop behind the seat? Yeah, wow, yeah, yeah. So. Oh, my God. He has never again touched their cornbread. <laughs> oh but I do have to make him some and them some. Just to be <laughs> fair, you know, just to be fair. He likes it, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, Snuffy. Oh, hey, oh, Snuffy. <laughs> um so i guess we can get to um your some of your videos and your pictures um and then we can talk some more after that grizzly would you mind because 
I I don't know if I can hit the buttons right now. The breeze has been awful quiet, you know. Yeah, I'm I'm dying from laughter, and I don't know why my <laughs> Facebook just closes. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. We'll I am so I don't know. It's this freaking computer or what? I can't do anything. You can definitely count on my clan to make you laugh because they yeah. make me laugh. <laughs> yeah. All so right, when yeah. um she, yeah, you sent a lot of great photos. There were some that I know I've seen a couple that I've seen before, and I know they weren't. But of course, when you know fight Facebook gets a hold of them and yeah. likes to to tear them up, <laughs> they just emailed them to you or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so we'll see what, and then you can just explain. Um, yeah, because I know there was some good ones. Um, let's see what <laughs> you've had the. Okay, here we go. <laughs> oh, yep, he's a wood oh, booger. Yeah. That's a little. That's a little sass, and oh. some people like to call him a wood booger, but that is a little sass. He just doesn't have a whole lot of hair on his cheeks and his arm yet. But they do grow it, and it gets really thick and long over time. Oh, That's wow. exactly what that is. That is wow. a Sasquatch. So the eyes you are the the eyes you have the eyes dotted, or is that or is I that dotted eyes? That. Oh, yeah, so you could tell. Yeah. yeah. Oh wow! But I know you can obviously see him, but I did yes. because his eyes were so black and dark. I oh. dotted them. Okay. So what on his on the top of his head? How is how Oops. is his hair? Is it like back. a bouffant? Is is some. It's confusing the way it looks. It looks like he's up in a tree like this trying to hide uh -huh. it. But it's really, he's got a really high head. Uh -huh. And then he's got a lot of hair that comes down his back of his neck and okay. along the sides. And it's very thick. Okay. He's got a lot of hair on his back and on his legs. Oh, all right. Wow, that's, yeah, that's that's amazing. Wow. <laughs> all right, so what is this? This I know that what it is. It is my friendly, not so friendly, gray alien coming to pay me a visit, telling me mentally that I can't get him on video. And I'm telling him, yes, I can. I'll show you. And he's at my back door and you can literally see his eyes moving. Then he started trying to zap my phone and making it go in and out, out of focus. But I was determined to stand there and get a video of him looking in my back door. Oh, yeah. You just saw his eyes blink, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, you see the green yeah. on the glass. You see where the green on the glass, right? Wow. Let me replay that again. Yeah. So is that, he? is he like, lean, like leaning toward the glass? Is that what? He's leaning down because he's very tall. Okay. Um, the, the bottom part of the roof of the, the porch is a seven and a half feet, and he's still having to bend down oh. like this. So he's very close, up close to the glass. Okay. And this is a gray alien. Okay. Yeah, he's a gray. Wow. Yeah, because you can you see, see like it. Blank. Mm -hmm. And the breath right on there. the... Now, the, that's the light to the left and to the right of his head. It's a little strand of uh, outdoor lights that I had on the porch. Right. Mm -hmm. So that way I know he's up close against the door. Yeah. And I believe I say to my husband, you see the face right there, right? Because you can. This is one of the ones Facebook tried to scramble because it's much better in group. Yes, I bet. Yeah, yeah. You can see the breath on the glass. You see yeah, you can see the, yep, glass, the breath right? on the glass. Wow. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Wow, that was that. So then when I was finished with that video, I, I put it up against the, I hit play and put it up against the window. I said, I told you I could get you. <laughs> Me being a All smart right, so. man. That is a cloaked Sasquatch being. It's one of the ones that look more like a bear. Oh, okay. Wow. But directly to the uh, left side, that mm -hmm. is a dog man here with his mouth open oh wait 
that is a Sasquatch behind him. And then on the other side of the picture, you can't deny what it is. It is absolutely a dog man. Here. Right there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. And that's from a video. So I actually got them on video coming and going. And my, wow. how I got this was I walked outside and my horse alerted and she snorted and she turned and she faced that part of the, the woods. And I was like, all right. Cause I couldn't see anything in my eyes. So I set oh. my camera up with a zoom lens and I said, whatever's out there, we're going to get you. And I've got about a, a five or six minute video and you'll, and there's many different entities in it, wow. but that's just a screenshot from the video. Okay. So did you see any of this with your, you know, like naked eye or just through the, once I started focusing on it, uh -huh. then I could see the shimmers and I could see them when they turned how dark they were. Oh, and then I wow. started noticing and then filling up and hiding into the, the greenery that was behind the fence. Oh my that they're gosh. up against, they're about three feet from a, a woven wire fence for cattle. So oh. they're, they're sort of bleeding into the, the cedar trees and the mm -hmm. weeds and the brush, the, the blackberry bromble and whatever. That's yeah. right there. Fence. Wow. So somebody asked, did these, do these guys fight at all? Those fought with me. Those came with that gray at the door. Oh. And they were not friendlies. Oh, wow. Okay. Probably better for another show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll have to talk about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. <clears throat> <laughs> Try and play catch up here on the uh, comments as I'm flipping. Let me go to the next one here. Let's see here. Well, that's that's uh, Barb's. Was that Barb's? No, this is this is this is Jennifer. I showed the, yeah. Oh, that's I've right. I showed you this before. Yeah, I showed. And you Grizzly got the this one way. over here. Yeah. Because Grizzly, this is the one where you noticed a flash before the big right. one comes out. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Because now, now this is, tell us what's happening with this. It's yeah. raining really hard that day, and I just happened to be looking out my back door. It just I felt drawn to the back door and I noticed a, a bright white light in the woods and I was like, OK, well, I'm going to record this. So I put my cell phone on record, hit zoom and, and light it up on the, on the glass and I'm recording this portal. And at the end of it, you'll see a beam jump out of it. Yeah. And I've had a lot of people say, oh, that's just reflection. That's reflection. No, I did another video proving that it's not a reflection. Mm -hmm. But that's what that was a portal with an a Sasquatch actually exiting the portal, and yeah. um, go moving the if, looking at the light, looking at it on the left. The gifting tree is only about forty yards, forty five yards. Wow. Yeah. So I want you. To, yeah, if you can see when it comes out, because you can clearly see it running around. Mm hmm. Um. Oh, and it's going to be yeah, to the extreme left. Is that it right there? Yeah. 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 Wow. This right here. Wow. Let's see if it'll start over. We can get the light. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> can you take Grizzly? Can you take Linda Judd? There's a her comment is like in front of the video. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, is it? Yeah. Let me, yeah, uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, okay, that's better. Good. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, let me go back here. Yeah. Yeah, there you can see it. It's mm -hmm. right above that. You can see pipe, it moving right? right there. That's just, yeah, that's just see amazing. It? Wow. And they came out of that light. Wow. And they, there it goes. There'll oh. be another one that jumps out and goes on the ground. Yeah, because you saw the flash. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they absolutely do use portal to, to, to travel. And there's your proof. It's yeah. Not, you know, it's not perfect. Nothing out there is, but it's it's pretty good, especially so, if you're able to see it. That is a UFO that I caught coming oh, wow. over the, the, the ridge that I walk and coming over the backside of my house. And I stepped out. Of course, I didn't have night. Uh, yeah. 
night shot on my phone or anything. So I just took a quick picture. And this is a, a UFO coming over that ridge and, come, and came what, right over top of my house within oh, feet. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it looks massive. It, it, is, it was massive. Was it round? like like? Yeah, it was saucer-shaped. Oh. Wow. Sure wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would have died. <laughs> well, see, they've been conditioning me my entire life. Like I said, I'm 57 years old, so I got over being afraid a long time ago. I mm -hmm. had to. You know, the only way you survive it is overcome your fear. Yeah. This is a real interesting one here. I was out walking a, a hiking with my dog. At the time, I had a dog that was half lab and half great mountain Pyrenees. He was a beautiful, gigantic beast. And he walked every hike hiked every trail with me that I've ever been on. And we were we found a very narrow deer trail. So and it was a very slow, low incline going up the side of the ridge. And at one point, right before I took this picture, Bo came around me and sat down and stopped. Oh. And I said, What's the matter, baby? And I just rubbed him on his head and I went around him, continuing forward. He wasn't satisfied. He came around me again. This time he jumped up and he was such a large dog he could put both paws on my shoulders and look at me. He jumped up, put his paws on my shoulders and whimpered and sat back down. And I said, I understand. Oh. So I got my camera and I went click, click. And I said, let's go to the house. And he took me home. This is one of the pictures I took. That's a dog man. And then, then apparently one of the juvenile Sasquatch had put itself in between me and the dog man. Oh. And Bo had seen both of them. But oh. I was looking at the plants and stuff around and looking for prints. So I was mm -hmm. looking down. So luckily the dog was looking forward. Wow. Yeah. So he actually saved my life. Wow. That's awesome. Oh my gosh. Wow. So he's looking at, is he looking at the, he's looking at the dog man. He's looking the dog at man. the bridge. So the dog mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, me and Bobby went back later on, and we measured the distance between. This was a a, a grapevine. They stretched back across there, and it looks like an ink mark, but it's not. Okay. And it measured six and a half feet. Mm. So that gives you any idea of the size of, of how big the yeah. creature is that's there. Yeah. Wow. And that also looks like that dog man looks like a. Kind of looks like a wolf, I think. Yes, it looks very wolfish. Yeah, like a like a. Like a, a lot dog. of them do look very wolfish. Yeah. Um, Standing Stone had said the photo at the door. Now I saw what looked like a very tall gray and a side shot. Is that what? Yes. Okay. Yeah. There's actually more in that that video because you know once I got it and everything settled down, I lightened it some. And there's an actually a being in the center of the door, and you can see the face clearly. Okay. So there was more than one. Yeah. But yes, that is a tall gray, what they call a tall gray. Mm. He was well over seven feet. Yeah, it was leaning forward, she said, right? Yeah, like against the, um, hi, Yolanda. Um, and Linda said, you, you have an affinity for squatches, but not dog man, which you want. Yeah, I mean, obvious. I, you know, you want to explain that? because I have both in my life, but I had always had the squatches. I mean, no clue that, they, like I said, that even the dog man existed until the young one ran beside our truck. Mm -hmm. um, the, but now I do have one abduction experience to where, and I had, had my phone up against my chest, video recording when I went out the back door. and I had just looked at the clock, so I knew what time it was when I went in and what time it was when I went out. I was gone for an hour and 45 minutes, but my camera only recorded for a minute and two seconds. Oh, and wow. you can find you know, there's some really interesting things that were caught on that short one minute video. But but most intriguing was the audio. You can hear them running in the dog man and the Sasquatches. You can hear them clearly clearing my wooden fence out back and and hear loud thuds. You can hear them barking and screeching. And it's like they were all trying to get to me to help me. And once they crossed that fence. They were just hitting the ground, just like unconscious. Oh. So they were trying to help me as with, as with the Sasquatch family. I've just never, until these past few years, even realized there was such thing as a dog man. Oh, okay. 
I've always had that close affinity with forest people, with the Sasquatch people. Okay. Yeah. Standing Stone, um, are you, is your property on a ley line, do you know? Most likely it is. Yeah, yeah. I've got some amazing uh, uh, trees that grow really strange or they grow split open like with hearts and like little bowls, wow. but they grow naturally that way. And I'm assuming it's from the energy. So I'm, I'm thinking that the ley lines have probably moved or shifted with the way that the, the magnetic pole is moving. Mm -hmm. and, you know, we're moving much further toward Russia. So yeah. it's, it's very possible that has a lot to do with it. Um, is what you would, I think you told me, um, about, uh, you had, was it BFRO that came out mm -hmm. to your property and you want to tell us about that? What happened with that? <laughs> well, um, well, it's what started it was Adrian and Dennis who were with, uh, Melba Ketchum and Melba. It's when they were studying Melba in Kentucky. And of course my location is, uh, 45 minute drive as a crow flies from Melba where they were recording her. In fact, the first time I ever saw the video of Melba, she was asleep in the forest and somebody had come up on her and, and videoed her as she was sleeping. You see her chest rising and falling. They showed me that on my dining room table. Adrian wow. did. Wow. So that's, they hooked me up with a group of BFRO and that were to monitor my location because I was going to keep it quiet, keep it silent. I wasn't going to do anything to harm them in order to get blood samples like they wanted me to mm -hmm. feed them out of 10 pans that were deliberately cut and torn. So they cut their tongues and caused bleeding. And I flat refused. Oh, I said, yeah, I will yeah. never do that. Oh, and they yeah. said, even I heard them, I said, I don't care. I will not do it. I don't blame you. Yeah. So we'll just keep this location calm and cool. Mm -hmm. So they assigned me a, a caseworker, I guess you would call it. And he came out several times. But the last time he came, we were walking the ridge line and we had gone across the 77 acres. There's a full ridge that follows that 77 acres at the top. And then there's what you call a slave wall. It was built during slave times. And it was a land boundary wall, but it's made it's a wall of rocks. So we crossed over that onto another man's 250 acres. And it was in bankruptcy court, so I knew it was fine to be on it. And we were going through grass that hadn't been cut in several years. It's over my head. And I mm -hmm. always walk with a walking stick because of rattlesnakes, of course. Mm -hmm. And oh, he had picked up a stick along the way. And he was walking with one behind me. Well, I'm five foot. He was six foot five. Mm -hmm. And he's right behind me. So I step out into a clearing by a tiny little pond. And right in, in front of me, oh, I'd say 20 yards max, was a line of thicket of cedar trees, really tall, squished together really good. But, I mean, it was just one line of them. I stepped out and I turned around to say something to him and he stepped out and he had that stick up like this as he was coming out of the grass. All of a sudden, one of them let out ungodliest roaring scream you have ever heard and started shaking that center cedar tree. And I mean, he's, all, all of them were moving. He was in such a rage. And I, finally I said, he's not going to hurt me. I promise. I looked around at dude and I said, put the stick down. And he was just transfixed on the trees. He couldn't even focus on me. And I said, dude, you yeah. have to put the stick down. He thinks you're going to hurt me. It took mm -hmm. me three tries to get him to put that stick down. And then the shaking stopped. And I turned oh. back around. I said, he didn't mean me any harm. Mm -hmm. And then you hear him run off. Well, by the time we walked the two miles back to my house, he was firmly convinced it was a helicopter going over that did that. Oh, and to this, oh day, to this day, thinks it still was a helicopter. So that's why last time you say Vicki Brown posting helicopters as emojis in some of my posts. She's laughing about that. Oh, well. OK. Yeah, yeah, I knew that. Yeah, because we've we heard. To, yeah, not to bash them, but we've heard some similar calling names, you know, and I won't say it was. Yeah, the FRO. I right. Will say right. That they were assigned to my case through Adrian and Dennis. Mm -hmm. I will tell you that. But um, yeah, I just call him dude. <laughs> it wow, happened <a> helicopter <laughs> yeah by the time we walked that short distance back to the house he was from the consensus it was just a helicopter wow what helicopter who the hell <laughs> yeah yeah right I yeah he was and then why did he yeah. have the the stick above his head too right yeah um yeah. let's see so linda jez the cal state university of hayward california was built on the hayward fault line 
I found a spot in the abandoned building that made me feel like I was going to black out. And when I walked, it felt weird and I moved fast. That's so that sounds like a vortex. Yeah, a vortex for sure. And so, um, yeah, Linda had asked, what's the difference between a vortex and a, and a, lay, and a ley line? But ley lines are, um, I mean, do you want to explain that? Well, a vortex is a, a portal of energy that they will open to use for travel. And a ley line is the ley lines that are uh, integrated into the Earth's magnetic shield. And they're set up in certain uh, compass locations all over the world, but in a grid-like pattern. And the energy there is always very different. It's very powerful. Yeah. And it will cause mutations in plant growth. It will cause mutations in the mind. You know, it depends on the, the type of energy that you're, you're around on those light lines. The vortexes are just simply opening up a portal. And, it's, it's, and if it's, a lot of them are open all the time. And it probably goes back to the hollow earth theory, if I had to guess, because not all the ETs that I have dealt with have come from outer space per se. They are really? an inner space. Mm. Yeah, there absolutely okay. is an inner space. If any of you have ever followed Admiral Byrd, I'm an absolute firm believer in it simply because of my experiences. Okay. Now, Admiral Byrd, spirit, ladies and gentlemen, is the one that flew over the pole and saw that the, her, the earth was hollow. And they mm -hmm. hushed him up. Mm -hmm. so. No, they killed him, didn't they? Yeah, I, I was being polite. <laughs> yeah, they threw him out of a medical, uh, what, six explorer of a medical building or something? Yes. Yes, Allegedly, they killed him yeah. and shut him up, like they tend to do. Yeah. That's why, you know, I'm 57 years old, and I am just now doing podcasting. You know, I'm just now, this past year, been able to speak freely in an online group that where I wasn't constantly ridiculed over what I was telling them. And that's one of the reasons I was so determined to get photographs that weren't just blurry, to get videos that you could actually see what was going on. Say, look, I can tell you my story. This goes with it. Mm -hmm. Now, if you can't believe that and you want to call me a hoax or you want to call me someone who just needs attention or whatever, you're the one with the problem, not me. Mm -hmm. right. I've got proof. Yep. Yeah, well, none of us are getting rich off of these not of our photos. <laughs> nope. um, I have and, I have those black helicopters come over my place low all the time. I have those hang up phone calls. You know, I've walked into two guys in the woods who definitely did not belong there. You know, mm -hmm. so because of my interaction, somehow they know. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so like I said, it's all intertwined. Yeah. Yeah. But um, no. I won't be silenced now. I'm mm -hmm. going to tell what I know before. Mm -hmm. From today until the day I'm not here, I'm going to mm -hmm. tell what I know. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to share with my photographs and with my videos. And like you said, we're not making a dime. No. 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 <laughs> we're not making and, a penny. I don't and, have any books. You know, I don't have a Facebook yeah. group. Um, I'm, well, you know, and if, terrible, you, if, but. if you write a book and if you, you know, that's that's great. But even people that are, you know, most of our, fr a lot of our friends have books. And again, they're not, you know, they're not millionaires because it's just... They're just um, trying to share yeah, what they're yeah. encountering. Share and it knowledge. also, um, I have to say what really annoys me, and this is I, this is just, I really, when people say, I, you know, why can't, we need to have somebody get some clear photographs and you need to bring some proof. Go and do it. Try to do it. Because exactly. it's not, I mean, it's not easy. No, it's they not easy. They have to understand that these are, um, you know, beings that operate or, or you know, uh, at a, a higher frequency. Than we do and they they emit and they can they emit a free different frequency and and they and they can mess with electronics and yes they can and if you've gotten video and or a really good picture <laughs> it's not totally blurry it's because it was allowed it's the only mm -hmm. reason it's yeah. because they allowed you to yeah. and it's that's yeah. it plain and simple whether it's mm -hmm. the aliens whether it's the, the fae whether it's the sasquatch people whether it's the dog men it's because it was allowed yeah yeah so yeah that does i don't know why that I've, I've been seeing that lately in some groups and like um i had somebody in my group and i think grizzly you probably saw that i said well this guy didn't last long because that was the yes. first thing that he said <laughs> i'm like bye bye you're not bye. wrong group for you <laughs> yeah i get you know what i get and it, it just, i just go Ugh. you know <laughs> the one that gets me is well why won't they just come out and say hi well think about that for a minute Look at us. They watch us. What do yeah. we do? 
-hmm. We kill mm -hmm. each other yeah. because right. we want somebody right. else's land or their oil or their water rights. We right. poison the oceans, we poison the sky and the air that we breathe, and we poison the land that yep. we live on. Yep. And we we yep. we have atomic bombs to kill entire cities. We kill, 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 take, take, take. Why you really think they don't come out and say, Hey, here we are, we've been here all this time? No. Right. They don't trust us. They don't like us. I don't know if I'm losing. We're you know, for the most part, human beings are, are a warring race. And they're not. They watch over this earth and they're watching us destroy it. So and you can't expect them to just want to walk out and say, hey, how you doing? It's not going to happen. Not unless it's a one-on-one. -on -one. It's not going to happen with someone who's standing there with a camera or someone that's holding a gun. It's just not going to happen. Yeah, I, I think I lost connectivity for a while. I'm sorry. I didn't hear what you were saying. I, what, what were you saying that before? I mean, did everybody they're just not gonna, Yeah, they're okay. just not No, gonna you're good. Out. No, okay. it must be you. Yeah, yeah, because I'm, I'm pretty sure it was me, but I didn't hear what. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm yeah. monitoring everything here and a couple yeah, yeah. other places, too. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Ever All since right. Well, I got the CIA called on me on one of my shows. Yeah. and So, yeah. uh, I've been taking <laughs> off Hope that doesn't happen times. again. Yeah. <laughs> So that's why I have to monitor because people will be like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm like, what? No, nah, I'm still here. Like, no, you are down. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That's one reason I'm very careful about who I talk to and, you know, who I share with is because because of those helicopters. But, you know, usually if I see those three black, black helicopters come over, the next day I see those discs coming. And I'm like, uh oh, here we go again. Yeah. This is not yeah. going to be pretty. It's not going to be pleasant. <laughs> Uh, um, so a couple, let's see, I'm thinking a couple things that I, that you, things that you told me that were interesting, um, that you said that the, uh, the little juveniles are like to go up on your roof. They and run around to play on my roof. I have a, a, a modular home and it is 36 feet wide and 78 feet long. Oh. And it is their racetrack. And at the end of it is my garage. <laughs> so they will run as hard as they can across the top of that, that roof of my house and jump onto that roof and turn around and jump back. And my poor best friend, when she's here, it's all night long. Wow. Because her the bedroom she sleeps in, the one I'm in right now, is, wow. is the window is looking at the garage. So she hears oh it all God. night long. So that's what they're doing. So how high are they jumping? Well, it's, uh, I would say... 15 feet from the edge of the house to the top of the roof of, of the garage. Wow. And it's a good 20 feet to the top, to the roof, maybe, maybe wow. more. Yeah. So, you know, if, if they're not running and ripping and playing on the roof, they're under the house beating and banging on the floor. And that's <laughs> usually when mom and dad has gone hunting and I'm the babysitter. Oh. <laughs> wouldn't be yeah. nothing for me to be, wouldn't be nothing for me to be taking a bath and you hear Oh my gosh. And I'll just tap right back on the bottom of the bathtub and they'll tap right back. I'll say, Well, I'm a babysitter today. See, Grizzly, this is like what I'm going to be <laughs> experiencing. I well, think was, you are I, not only experiencing that, I think you're experiencing the y'all walls we're going to talk about later. Oh, on yeah, yeah. Show well, and yeah, yeah. Um, but, um, but you know, it was, I think, I don't know if it was because of you, Jennifer, whatever. I, because I was thinking, you know, how I get, I get, um, audio consistently on my home security cameras yeah. and one of the things was a percussive sound that was like well now what is this and then when i i don't know if it was you somebody said about them running on the roof i'm like oh my gosh that is exactly what it sounds like is is someone is p you know what it must have been someone person. else because i remember seeing but, one yeah, of the but, videos the one was sitting in the flower pot and i remember seeing him raise his, his arm up real quick to his face and put it back yeah. down real quick. I said, yes. you got one yeah. sitting in your flower pot for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. That was, and I think that was a baby. You know what I found out that, um, I thought that the, it, the, uh, that, that, that part of the deck only sits like eight feet off the ground. So that's, yeah. they probably just stuck it right in there. Yeah. I was thinking it was higher because, you know, we live on a, like a, you know, like a pretty steep, um, grade. So I was thinking it was higher, but anyway, um, and, but it, yeah, so that's, that's, and then I think that they are, if they're not running around on the roof, just like you said, they're sitting under my house. Well, so. we had uh, two weeks ago, we had to have roofers come in and replace the roof on our house. Oh. So after the first week, 
nothing nothing happened. A couple of times they complained about a funny smell. <laughs> and I'm just green and go back in the house and I just pinch Bob like, don't you say a word. And then uh, the last week, on um, the first night, they left a bunch of bundles of shingles up on the roof. And we're going to come back and finish it the next day. And as I lay down and go to sleep that night, I mean, I just put my head on the pillow. I hear right over top of my head, boom, boom. And I mean, it sounded like somebody dropped an elephant out of the air. And I jumped straight up. And I said, Bob, somebody's on the roof. So he goes and he gets flashlight. <laughs> and he's walking around like he's really going to be able to see that high up on the roof, you know. Couldn't see anything. So the next morning I go out there and what they had done is the roofers had left a dump truck backed up to the back side of my house, right at the wall where my headboard, my bed's at. So they must have used it to as a trampoline, jumped on the, the dump truck and up on the roof. Oh my god. But they had apparently been sitting in the cedar trees in the front yard watching the roofers because as I'm looking at the dump truck and I just turn my eyes and look toward the cedar trees, one of the largest cedar trees, the whole entire top has been snapped and twisted oh wow and, I, and they hit me i said well i know why they've been smelling that smell they've been up there in those trees watching them work on that roof oh, yeah, yeah brazen wow. Wow. so i took, you know i took pictures of that you know yeah. i mean what else can break to snap the top out of a tree right. it's still green you can tell it's fresh mm -hmm. and the tree's mm -hmm. about it was 25 30 foot tall wow. so yeah there's oh something else it's always something yeah it's just like That's today, I was sitting in there in the living room here alone, house nice and quiet, and dogs were asleep. And I was like, oh, some quiet time. Boom! Something hit the back side of the house. All the dogs erupted, started barking. I said, you might as well shut up. You're not going to see anything. It was just like, hi, how you doing? <laughs> the fear factor oh was gosh. gone when I was a kid. I mean, just whoop, wiped out. So, you know, nothing really surprises oh, wow. me. I really like uh, that, well, that little that's clip good. I showed you guys. Uh, my cousin Vinny, bang, 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 come out the door yeah. shooting. <laughs> when that, when that, owl, yeah. that screech eye was screeching, he's like, what the yeah. hell? So, yeah. <laughs> the BFRL yeah. had installed a, a camera in our garden shed, which was just had our four wheeler in our uh, riding lawnmower in it. But they had raised the roof of just a little bit in the very back corner. And put a, a video camera that had night vision on it out over the back field because there was a trail that they would travel and come down along that wood line there. And they would come out into that open field and then over into my yard at night. I knew this. So they put the camera up and they put the recorder, the machine that recorded the, the, the record what they were recording. And they put it inside my woodshed, which was right beside it. So I hear a tremendous ruckus outside. I step out on my back deck. Not two weeks after they installed these cameras, and my chickens are just going wild. Well, my chicken house was right beside my tractor shed. So, and there was only like a four foot, maybe five foot clearance in between the two buildings. So, not even thinking about it being SAS family, I don't even grab a flashlight. I run out to the hen house, I go in between the tractor shed and the hen house, and I make it about four feet, and boom, I bounce and I look up. And I'm looking at one of the big males, and I have just bounced off his stomach. And trust me, he is oh a big gosh. male. Yeah. Yeah. So I step back and look at him. And he steps back, and he takes his arm and puts it behind the tractor shed. And he's doing this to the back part of the building. And he's just looking at me. And I'm like, it's broke. It don't work anymore. And he just kept <laughs> smacking that building. I said, Caleb, it's broke. I promise. Now, the lip of the building stops here, and from here to the ground is nine feet. His head was that much over where that this drop of the roof is, so I know he's over nine feet. I'm looking at him, and I said, Caleb, is broke, I'm telling you. I had to grow into the tractor shed in the dark, crawl over 20, 25 crates of Christmas and Halloween decorations up to the roof and take that camera down and bring it out and show it. Of course, he was gone by then. So after that, there was no more, no more night vision recording or camera. But to this day, and this was years ago, this is probably 2008, 2009 when that happened. To this day, if I go into my woodshed and shut the door, you can hear running feet and you can hear the cedar tree limbs beside it just squishing on that metal and you can hear silence. And they're coming to see, trying to see what I'm doing in that wood building. Of course, I create, I make, um, fairy houses and I do a lot of woodworking so I'm, I'm in there a lot but if I shut the door here they come 
I've got several oh, wow. really good uh, wow. uh, hand prints, pictures of hand prints and, and butt prints up under the, the building, my wood building, where they crawl under there and try to peek. Wow. Oh my Yeah, they're gosh. something else. <laughs> yeah. They I remember are around Christmas time you showing um a a video of, of a little one yeah. peeking in at you. Oh wow, yeah. look at that. Sorry. Oh wow. Yeah. That's cool. How big is that print? This print is eleven inches Whoa. long and it's six inches wide. So this is a juvenile. He's about six, five or six years old. It looks really big, doesn't it? Wow, that. But it's not. Yeah, and yeah, this was right cool. outside my back door. Oh my gosh! Right outside my back door. Yeah. Oh, that's wow. probably the best cast I have. Wow. wow. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. What was you asking me? Oh no, I'm I'm sorry. Yeah, I was just saying about um. I remember. I think one of the first videos that I saw from you was um. It was a little baby looking in, peeking in the window, or juvenile. I mean, it was, a, I think you said it was a baby, like peeking in your yeah. front door. And I, yeah. and I, and I said, yeah. hey, that, I, wait, that looks like a stuffed animal. And you said, no, it's not. And then I saw that, no, it was not. That was the I most I think you're talking about thing. the one where I have the, the little one walking across inside my house in my living room. Have you seen that one? Uh, I'll have yes, to send it to you. Is, okay. Yeah. Yeah. We'll and talk I thought about one, that. I, thought two, I think of them. I know which one you're talking about. The video of the little white one. Yes. Yes. Yeah. He Speaking was on the back like, porch looking in the back, uh, the back door. And I just happened to lean over and I saw kind of, of course he's quiet. You can see them at night. And I happened to lean over and see him. I was like, I got you. So I picked up my phone and I just started recording and you can see him just standing there and he's just doing this right here. And you know, he does like this and it's pretty good little recording. But he's white. But now his mother's white. And I don't think it's from age. I think she's just white. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So do you, with your family, the family structure of yours, <laughs> do you think that they, um, do they bring females in or ma males in to the They bring males land? in. They bring the males okay. in. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, there That's was one. There was too. one fall, late. It was late summer, early fall. That Sheree and I went walking. She's my best friend, and uh, we got to the ridge that we walk all the time. And as far as we could look, one way to the other, and I mean, it's the full length. It runs the full length of this seventy-seven acre farm. There were leaf beds, and we're talking every. They were five foot wide and seven or eight feet long, and just space just everywhere all over this ridge. And we were like, what in the world? And then it hit me. I said, it's mating season. The males were coming in. Oh, wow. So she will pick the male. The female will. And then he has to be approved by Sky, who's the alpha. And if he meets whatever criteria there is, then he's accepted into their family. Okay. But they were just here from, there was beds everywhere. And we wow. just, we were just like this. Oh my gosh! What? Mm -hmm. <gasps> wow, it's cool. Um, That's incredible. Yeah, oh, it see. is. It's, it's something. Is. It, it's amazing to experience it. It really is. Um, the things that we have seen. It's just like when Sheree was blessed enough to, to first see Coco. You know, his his. I call him Coco. I think his real name is Caleb. Oh, okay. whatever. I call him Coco. And um, he's big, black, muscular. He's one of the younger ones. And he stepped, literally stepped out just within feet of us because he thought she was hurt. And he literally showed himself to her. And he would look mm -hmm. at me and he would look at her. And I was laughing at this point. I said, she's okay, Coco. And he'd look at her and then he'd look at me. I said, I promise she's okay. And then he finally looked at her a third time. He took one step back and he Aww. turned. And he turned beside a sapling, a cedar sapling that was this big around. We're talking, this was a big boy. And a split second vanished. Wow. I mean, it, was, it wasn't it was thick forest right there. I mean, you know, it was thin saplings. There's no mm -hmm. way he could have just vanished. He did. Wow. Totally vanished. Wow. And she's like this. <laughs> yeah. Just one of those aha moments. And I'm standing there laughing wow. at her. Yeah. I mean, <gasps> at, this, at this point in my life, is like Kennedy's laugh. Yeah. Wow. Did you see that? Did you see that? Well, yeah, I'm right here beside you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. 
wow. the, the experiences I've had, like like when I got charged by that female who just had a baby, hair raising, you know, a normal human would have needed a diaper. You know, well, I tell, tell us about that. I don't, I don't, I didn't hear about that, and I don't. And the audience would like to hear about. We that. um, it was uh, I had heard on the the weather report them about three or four days was on snow. So I thought, well, I told Bobby to go to co-op. And I said, get me a bag of sweet feed and get me a bag of crushed corn. He said, what for? I said, I'm going to take it up there to where daddy pours out the corn and stuff for the deer, which is where they rest a lot and sleep a lot in that same area. I said, I'm going to put it out for them because it's fixing to get cold. He said, are you crazy? I said, no, I'm not. Go do it. He did. So I, I put it on my little tiny four-wheeler. I think it was like it's my son's one of his old ones, like a 90cc or something. It's a little bit thing. I put it on the back of the four wheel and I drop it up there and I get there and I put one 50 pound bag over my shoulder and I'm going down an alley. It's really, really clear. And on this side is a, it rises up about a 35 incline, 35 degree incline. And the week before that I had found a birthing hut. The reason I know that's what it was. Is it looked like, um, it looked like an igloo made out of rose vines and, and, uh, blackberry bromble and limbs and leaves and just all piled on top, but in basically of a shape of rounded like an igloo. And I know Z Whoa. had gotten down and crawled in there and looking around. Well, all the leaves were gone. So I said, well, the deers aren't using this for baiting. And then I noticed on the opposite end of the entrance hole was another hole, but it's a lot smaller. And there was a hole just outside about a foot and it only measured like a foot by a foot or a foot and a half by a foot and it was a small hole dug out i thought oh shoot this is a birthing hut somebody's fixing to have a baby so i got back out of it <coughs> oh wow well go back to i'm trucking down this alley with this bag of corn on my shoulder and i'm all, i'm almost to the tree where there's a piece of black pipe and it's just like a drain pipe and daddy would always just pour corn in it well i was just gonna set it beside it I hear an unbe unbelievable roar, scream, and I hear it coming from the area location of that birthing hut, which I knew was really close. And then you hear trees being snapped and knocked away and this running and pounding feet. And I just like, all I can think of is I'm going to die. It's all I can think of, I'm going to die. It must be a bear. I'm going to die. So I dropped the feed and I just froze. And I closed my eyes. I'm standing there just waiting for the impact, you know, because there's no point in trying to run. So I just be like this. And then all of a sudden, all I feel is the whoosh of air where something has been coming toward me fast that has stopped. Oh, wow. And I, I take a good breath or two, and then I open it up my eyes, and we are this close. <clears throat> We're just a foot and a half at the most. Of, oh, my is, God. She has thrown herself to the ground on her butt, dug her feet and her hands in, in a wow. slide, and trying to stop herself. Oh, and even my. with her sitting on her butt, and me and her looking at each other, she's still this much taller than me. I'm five foot, so that tells me she's about nine at least. Wow. Wow. And, but she didn't look real healthy. You know, you could, you could just tell a lot of her hair had fallen out. Um, oh. Her hairline really started at her ears and went around. She didn't have any hair on the chest or stomach. Wow. A little mm. bit on the length of her arms. She still had quite a bit of hair on her legs mm -hmm. and a little bit on her back, but it looked like she had been losing her hair because of ill health. She looked oh. very thin and frail looking. But the way she was sitting with those feet still dug in the ground and up mm -hmm. with her mm -hmm. knees up, you could tell she had just had a baby. Oh, okay. I mean, it's blatantly off. Yeah. Grown up on a farm, wow. you know, what it looks yeah. like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all I could do was say, crazy as I am, I said, sister, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to frighten you. Mm -hmm. I was just bringing you food. And she mm -hmm. looked at me and looked down at that bag of corn. I said, yes, baby, that's for you. Aww. I said, it's going to rain in a few days. I said, it's going to snow in just a few days. I said, the white powder is going to fall. And I said, this food is for you to have something to eat. And again, she looked at that corn and she looked at me. I said, yep, it's for you. It's not for the horses. Aww. I've got another one right over there. And I said, and I'm really sorry I started you. And I just backed away from her. And I just turned. And I was headed back to my four-wheeler. And I happened to glance. I had taken maybe four or five steps from her. And I looked to my right and looked up, and there stood three males, oh, full-grown wow. males standing there looking at me like, oh. And I looked back at the four-wheeler. Well, that other bag's gone. Somebody done claimed that food. They done <laughs> took it. Wow. So I get to the fence. It's just a two-strand barbed wire fence. My four-wheeler's on the other side. 
And I'm like, mm-mm, country girl. I pulled out my wire cutters, and I cut both those strands of bob wire. Cut them both. <laughs> just laid the fence down. And I got on my four-wheel and went back to the house. Well, by the time I got to the house, I was like this. <laughs> you know, panic and and all of that adrenaline and everything that just happened to me, they hit. Yeah. And I'm on the phone trying to call my dad and can't get through. Oh. I call my husband and I'm babbling. And he oh. said, can't understand what just happened, but I'll be home. We'll go fix the fence. I said, you go fix the fence. I'm not going back <laughs> to get in trouble again. But I did go with him. But, you know, for some reason, I kept thinking it's a bear and I'm going to die. Wow. And I closed my eyes. I just... You just felt a, a calmness come over me. Most people be screaming and running or whatever, but no. I just, I'm lucky to be alive. <laughs> yeah, very. Amazing. Just very. incredible. But well, yeah. if you can, if you can, if you, when you don't have that fear and you can stand there and, and talk yeah. calmly. Yeah. And, yeah. And you can take in their eyes, their mm -hmm. skin. It's leathery, but it looks soft. You know, it doesn't have all the wrinkles and creases in it like most of the artists show. It doesn't have that. Their eyes are larger. And you can see the expressions in their eyes. You can see the texture of their skin where they don't have the hair. And even if they do, you know, mm -hmm. if you're not afraid, you can absorb what you're looking at. Okay. Wow. But that's the one I call Rosebud. Okay. Oh, <laughs> yeah, has she recovered? Did she? Did that? Yeah, that she part? did. Okay, yeah, it was good. just. It was one of those summers where it was really, really hot. Mm -hmm. I mean, just, just, it was just terrible hot, and she was pregnant yeah. through that hot, hot summer. But okay. yes, yeah, she did. She recovered and had maybe a bad, a hard birth, and you know, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. She did. She wow. recovered. Well, Jennifer, this has just been fantastic, and so Absolutely. we will definitely be talking to you about well, yeah, I enjoyed it. I love talking on the to, books to again like um, folks and sharing. Wow, because this is just incredible. Um hey Snuffy said ask Jen is that where she got her PhD? She will know what I post ho digging certificate <laughs> post ho digging you better believe it brother <laughs> That's right funny. here on this farm. Yes sir. <laughs> So, right. uh, Jennifer, mm -hmm. tonight at 10 o'clock, we have a whistleblower coming on the show uh, that uh, did not believe in Bigfoot. He's in law enforcement, and uh, he got uh, called to the hospital, and he thought it was a domestic call, and it was uh, Bigfoot versus human. And mm -hmm. he has held it, and he cannot hold it any longer, and he is coming out and telling the world. Uh, his story, and he's still in the police department, but we have to uh, conceal as a conceal his identity. Yeah. So it's going to be very interesting. interesting. I would think yes. I will be listening to that one for sure. That, that's at yeah. ten o'clock Eastern. Time. Sounds like a rogue, and some of the rogues wow. are. Yes. Uh, so it's it's uh, yeah. it, they're just I, like us. They're all it's different. Interesting. I can say that much. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. going to be interesting. Absolutely, I'll be tuning in for that one. Yeah, yeah, because because uh, we want to talk about rogues. I know you know a whole lot more than what you're telling us right now. Oh, I God. know, I do, I do. Oh, yeah, we have so yeah. much. Yeah, and I want. Yeah, well, there's so much more that she can has to share with it. You know that we probably. Yeah, we'll just maybe do two more shows because yeah, we'll there's so much. More. Oh my God, absolutely. <laughs> I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be, the, right. the whole 57 years of my life have been it's something crazy. You know, you know, oh. and you, you look up to the heavens and say, God, what did I do to deserve this life? And, you know, you, you can look at it that way or you can say, well, actually, I was blessed because I know a lot more that other humans don't know. Yes. But, uh, yes. Yeah. But, yeah, it's been something else. It really has. It's wow. one thing after another. And luckily, I was always lucky enough to have a camera in my pocket. My aunt gave me my first camera when I was 11. And I've been wild about taking pictures ever since. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for all the help that you give yeah. me. I'm always asking Jennifer for advice on on the photos and and what I yeah. So I really appreciate that. Hey, it's uh, my pleasure. I think that's yeah, why Snuffy well, calls me Hawkeye. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I know when yeah. you're in bed, Jennifer, because I get the taxes in four o'clock in the morning. Yeah, you gonna believe this? Oh my god! No, 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 no. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> that's that's what we call them, Yowie. That's, that's off Star Wars. We'll explain that on another show, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, yeah. I have, to, I have to send her that. I have to send. I haven't sent you that uh, video, Jennifer. I have to send that to you because it is a weird. Yeah, he said it looks like the little 
yeah, people. Um, Thank, Star, uh, Star Wars. Wars that collect mm -hmm. uh, that uh, scavenge. Not the, oh, yeah. not, uh, not the they don't have a face. Yeah, they don't have a face. They're they always in little like... robes and little mm -hmm. eyes. Eyes, yeah, the Ewoks, yeah. but the um, yeah, the ones that were in the called. desert. Yes, those are yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you and, know, it's funny that you did say that because I, there's definitely, I have little ones that look like, I feel like they look like Ewoks. Their faces. Yeah. Seem like I have seen things. little ones that look like little Ewoks. Yeah. And I'll be just like, like Chewbacca. Yeah. Where'd you come from, dude? I mean, yeah. what are you? <laughs> yeah. Chris said earlier, he's like, beware of Darth Vader. If I see yeah. Darth Vader on Barb's camera, that's it. If and I I'm see like, Darth Vader, I'm running for Chewbacca. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I play with Chewbacca. You know how many Chewbacca's I have yeah. made, pronounced, and the human that came out of humans with my taser on the PD. But yeah, that's that's another story too, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Everybody always has a different Chewbacca sound, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty good though. Pretty good. It is. It, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen, uh, just YouTube that uh, taser. Some people getting tased, and they all sound like different Chewbacca's. They all make a different uh, Bigfoot sound. And I'll, well, I'll say it in another show. But anyways, from coast to coast, that's a wrap. And around the world, ladies and gentlemen, Jennifer, we'll see you on the next time. Yeah. And we greatly appreciate you coming on. Thank oh, you. Oh, I appreciate so y'all letting me talk. I enjoy it. Oh, absolutely. It. And everybody will see you at 10 p.m. Eastern time. Take care. All right. Godspeed. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Have a great night. Bye. Bye-bye. It's a grizzly. Should we get out of here? No. We're gonna watch and listen. Action. It's a grizzly. Oh, ship, should we run? <laughs> no. Action. It's a grizzly. Oh, shit. Should we run? <laughs> okay. It's a grizzly. Are you sure it's not Jim Monk? <laughs> It's a grizzly. Oh, I'm out of here. Huh. Maybe it is a chipmunk. Oh, it's a grizzly. Oh, it. Are we going to die? I don't know. We're just going to sit here and listen and watch. Let's get out of here, maybe. Oh! <laughs>